Today I'd like to show you how to use flower and water resist um, to do a more detailed drawing other than the previous videos where I've shown you how to actually paint a design using flower and water. I'm going to try to get it to a good consistency to get through this nozzle. I'm not sure it's going to work but I'll have a go. I'm going to take some of this flour and water that I've mixed here and you'll see that this is actually quite a nice sort of goopy consistency but I'm going to need to thin that down quite a lot to be able to get it to go through the nozzle of my bottle and I'm still not certain it's going to work but let's have a look you could take a, bo a bottle that has a slightly wider nozzle but I would like to do some more delicate designs so I'm just going to use this to make this more or less the consistency of runny cream quite a lot more water in here normally if you're painting a, a bigger more open design like for instance a heart you wouldn't want it to be this thin because you're not going to get much of a crackle but I'm wanting to block out the fabric so that it stays neutral color so that I can do the background and this should work Right, this could be quite messy, so I'm going to head off to the kitchen sink to decant this into my little bottle, and I will be back. Well, <clears throat> I wasn't kidding when I said it was going to be messy, um, and that's simply because the little neck of the bottle is very small. I have got other ones with bigger necks, but I just for the life of me can't find any empty ones. And then I diluted the consistency of the resist down to this pouring cream. There's still a few lumps. You could have put this through a strainer if you wanted to. Um, but I think if I've got a few lumps I'm just going to give the bottle a shake to move them so flour is going to be heavier than water and although I've just put this in I'm going to give it a shake now just so that the mixture mixes together nicely and then with everything that you've never tried before just do it on a scrap of paper it really doesn't hurt it doesn't cost much you'll see initially that some moisture will come out of the nozzle and perhaps be a little bit runny but this is coming out quite nicely right so I'm going to just start here turn this fabric this way move this out the way give myself a bit more space I'm just going to do some freehand designs and I'm just going to write here petite crackle you want your lines to join together so that you don't have any gaps and you want to try and make them fairly even in thickness so that might require that you go over them more than once just because this is a fine no nozzle so I'm just going to write here petite crackle and if you find it's not flowing easily then put your little cap on and just give it a shake just sometimes mix things up I found this nice little bottle I think I got it from Timu and they've got a a lot of them that weren't really expensive but I'm sure you'd be able to find one where you get makeup supplies and those sort of things cake icing shops maybe for putting fondant and that kind of stuff I don't know if I've even got that right maybe not fondant it's quite thick but icing so this is boutique So for this one, if you wanted to, you could tape it down, but the fabric will still move. But you're not doing it, the whole background, you're just painting in the words. Petite crackle. I'm not having too much control over how much comes out at this stage. But because this is not you know factory produced I'm actually not worried about that so one of the things that you'll see as this starts to dry is that you might get a little halo of water that shows up around the outside of your letters and your design that's absolutely fine and um, that's only water so don't worry about it and then you can also notice that the color of the mixture will change from this whitish creamy white to a darker sort of creamy yellow and that's just as a drying and then the last thing that will happen is that 
your fabric is going to pucker and that's just simply because there's something quite stiff on it which is the flower and it's actually making the fabric react in that way now I've got one of my lumps should have strained this but anyway Ooh, can't be helped go with the flow Okay, I would have suggest that you probably do strain this first and you wouldn't have that pressure of that coming through. So I'm just going to continue writing on here and then I'm going to just do a couple of little designs. I'll show you what it looks like once I've finished that. In the end of the design, <clears throat> I've had a couple of bloops like that where the liquid came out too quickly. Um, but those are correctable and I'll show you how to do that when we come to paint the design. So I'm just doing the last of the little flowers here using a circle as the center, more like a little daisy, and just lightly drawing petals. So you can take from this middle section where the liquid is quite thick and just drag it out so that you actually do the petals nicely. Just make sure that when you're working that if you don't want the liquid to come out that you do stop squeezing because if you continue squeezing then the bottle is going to just shoot the liquid out as happened there maybe just even have a test piece of fabric to begin with it takes a little while just to get to see how it's going to behave just like trying out new paints or pencils and then just try and even out the thickness of your lines a little bit so you can just go over them by dragging some of this from the center some of those are drying quite nicely and then I think I'll just do a few really big spots at the bottom but not in a row just random dots dots and spots I want to make them a little bit bigger than possibly the design calls for just simply so that they will crackle and that you can see the resist so lessons learned for using in a small nozzle bottle perhaps just put your mixture through a sieve so you get rid of any lumps and then you will need to have your liquid fairly runny to be able to do this consistency if your nozzle does block up then all you do is just go to the tap and just either take a needle or a pin or just even a bristle from one of your kitchen sort of scrubbing brushes um, and just push that down the nozzle so that you release that little bit of flour and water that's there okie dokie so if I look at this design here I think what I'm going to do is just to drag some of the flour here so that the plus looks more like a plus and yeah I'm pretty much going to leave most of this oh, here here where the U is I could spread that out a little bit just to even that out and then over here maybe just drag the liquid around to make a pron more pronounced W because some of these other letters will be thicker and this R just needs a bit of definition so that I'll show you how to sort that out and the E's and things so this I'm going to set aside to dry. Well, I had a bit of a disaster. I started chattering away to you all and then found when I got to the end of it that I hadn't pressed record on my camera. So let me just explain to you what I did. The design was dry and you would have seen that picture um, in the video just before this. Then I took some of this custard yellow fabric paint and I painted it over the whole design, making sure that I got into all these little tiny spaces right up against where the resist is because the idea of the resist is that it's going to be blocking the fabric so that wherever there's a resist the color's not going to show through so can you see there how the design's showing through nicely all right so now what I'm going to do is just leave this to dry completely and then once it's dry you're going to take a piece of white paper a like copy paper or you're going to take something like baking parchment put it on your ironing board to protect it and then you're going to iron with a hot dry iron for two to three minutes no steam no water just a hot dry iron and then once that's dry we will rinse out the actual resist 
and then we'll be able to see the design but it's going to come out nicely and then these areas that I had with the thicker sort of paint well the thicker resist I will be able to correct those once I'm done so you can see that that has worked all right so I'm going to leave this to dry sorry you didn't get to see the whole thing but sometimes these things happen and I'll see you when this is completely dry okay so our flower and water resist has dried nicely and you'll see that you can still see the flower um, although it's colored by the actual fabric paint and if you turn it over and you have a look from this side you'll see that it actually looks quite white where the um, flower and water has blocked the paint from penetrating the fabric so the next step here now is to remove the flower and water so that we can actually do that and you can do that two different ways you can either soak this after you've ironed the back with a hot dry iron to fix the color into the fabric you can just rinse it in some cold water it'll come off or because we've used a liner bottle you can do what I've started to do here and just gently pick it off so you will see that this will come off fairly easily just by scratching and you can only really do this if you've actually got quite a small design so let me take this little bit up at the top here which is easier to see and you'll see that this comes away really really easily so having seen now how easily it comes off I'm going to just carry on with this because I'm sure you don't want to watch me do it well it'll take me about five or so minutes or so and then I'll come back to show you how we can correct these little areas where the liner splodged out the bottle and made it a little bit thick okay so I've now removed all the flour and water which was stopping the fabric paint from actually penetrating the fabric but I did have these few little areas here that um, the resist covered a little bit too thickly and so I don't have a lot of definition so all I'm going to take is this really funny little brush of mine with a stubby end and I find it incredibly useful I'm going to put a teeny weeny bit of paint on it and so for the E I'm just going to brush in where I need the letters to be and you can touch up these so where, where the resist has blocked the fabric you can touch up but if you haven't had resist and the paint has gone on the fabric then that's a different story so this won't take, take very long but remember you're applying a fresh coat of paint to this so you're going to need to heat set the um, paint once again right so I'm just defining this K and it's just a few little bits of paint that does it so the A here I just need this little gap in the middle here let's turn it this way so we get a better look and maybe I don't want this section to be quite as thick and then I might just put a little bit here just to have the C a bit more defined there we go so you can see there I didn't have enough on the leg of the A but it doesn't matter because it's right up against the C and then here I'm just going to define this a little bit more remembering that the T has got this little arm that comes out and maybe just make this a bit smaller with the center of the A <clears throat> Sorry, I've got such a froggy throat this morning. Right, so that is all done. Easy to touch up. So now we'll go and heat set this once again, uh, once the paint is dry. And there you have it. And I do think it's a rather nice way to be able to do patterns on backgrounds. Oh, there's one I missed. I'll scrape that off. Anyway, I'll put a few other examples at the end of this video that you can just watch. Thank you for joining me. If you've enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Bye for now.